Hey guys, good morning. Um, it's going to be kind of brief. I'm going to try to put out a bunch of videos tonight, early in the morning. Um, this one's about a book that was wrote in 2015 called Visions and Writings of Promise, Hope, and a Future for America. I actually got two out. But I want to read one. There's a bunch of them in here. It's on Amazon. Um, if you can't afford it or whatever, just email me at youngs at uh, Jesus is alive in America at gmail.com. Um, I've got an electronic copy I can send you. Well, or email, whatever. Um, I can, you know, or I'll send you a book. I'll, I'm going to order some and I'll send, send you one. Just let me know. More than one, but I'm going to give you a couple of them, and then I'm going to end with that. And then, I saw a great whirlwind with its funnel touching down in the center of the sanctuary. Then I saw Jesus on the cross. Suddenly he walked off the cross came down to the area where all the power of the whirlwind touched the center of the sanctuary. He spoke and said, I am giving you power and authority to take the land by storm. Then he anointed the people of God with power from on high. Psalms 104.3, Acts 1.8, and Ephesians 3.7. I saw a great storm covering the earth. Then I saw Jesus. He came down and stood on the earth. He was a brilliant white light. Suddenly Jesus spoke, and a large multitude of angels proceeded out of his mouth and proceeded to the earth. Then he started rolling, they, then they started rolling back the storm of darkness until it was all gone and cast into the darkness of space. 1 John 2, 8, Revelation six fourteen. Then I want to end with, excuse me. <coughs> Sorry, I, I got a lot of hay fever this time of season. Um, in this one, I saw the outline of America. And there was dark clouds, high, miles high, all around, trying to engulf this country, pressing it. And the more the people prayed, the more angels came down and started pushing it farther away. The less they prayed, the more the darkness came in. So, guys, I'm saying this to say this. It, the 5 a.m. prayer is very, very important that we get together as a nation and pray. Because the more of us, I mean, how many millions are there? 360 million or, you know, you can back correct me if I'm wrong, I'm sure. So how many Christians are there? Men and women of God still are, even though most of the churches are closed. We are the church, guys. We are his body. But that prayer is very important. But right now, it's the listening piece because he wants to give us direction. So if it seems like my messages are kind of a little all over the map, they're not. It's just a wider net. But it's all, if you, if you listen to them, it's all all directing you to the cross, to God's Son, to His plan, His GPS to turn God's plan with His Son. God provided His Son. God promised His Son. So, 
He wants his people to turn, but it's a choice, guys. And you're going to hear a lot of my messages. I, he told me to plow down the middle, guys. Okay? There's a lot of judgment and doom and gloom stuff out there. I get that. And then there's the other side, the loosey-goosey, anything goes. Love, love, love. And it is God's love and his grace and his mercy. But he wants us to be pure and clean and his bride. And you're not going to get it without his direction, without getting on your knees, getting rid of this theology and using your neology. It's for all if we choose it. If we don't, I don't even like the word judgment, but it's in the Bible. We, we get out of the safety of the shadow of the Almighty. We'll leave it at that. Because if we don't abide under his wings, under the shadow of the Almighty, can't expect God to cover us. On, you know, it's a mockery of the cross, honestly, if he covers us under if we want to stay in willful sin and disobedience and not choose him, yes, I get it. You know, that's what he wants us to come with our sin before him. So he can cleanse us, make us pure, clean, holy, and acceptable. So they're going to be down the middle. And they're going to all be directional to come to him. Because at the end of the day, who's your source? It'd be God, Jesus, the Holy Ghost, and his word. Not a bunch of yahoos, I guess me included, on, on YouTube. <clears throat> you know, all the surreal, a lot of preachers now, it's like a talk show. Talk is cheap, guys. What are your actions portraying? What are you actually doing? <clears throat> There's a reason most of the churches got closed, guys, because we had built our houses upon sand. It's time to weep between the porch and the altar and really get a hold of God. <clears throat> he wants to be with us and in us. Not for us and not us for him. No more servants and slaves. That's why he died. He took on the form of a bond servant. He took that so that we could be his sons and daughters. No more servants and slaves to fear and the cares of this life. A lot of that surreal stuff that was built up in the church was really to just build up some other empire that had nothing to do with God. It's a man's thing. It was their show. Look at most of them, how they, how they acted, guys. It was Their name was top of the top of the charts, and it was all about them and their money and their power and their trips and what they were doing and how many people they had, how big their buildings were. And a bunch of nonsense, guys. Why are we looking for a building? When we're a building fitly framed together, when we're his body, we're the, he created us to dwell in us. But he wants his people to turn back to him. So, anyhow, um, get this book, guys. I've had, and I was telling you I actually had two out, okay? Because then this is part of, I don't even know if it's the right thing to say a problem it was more demonic actually so yeah it was a problem March of last year I produced put this book out called Jesus Christ in you the hope of glory and I also have an electronic copy of that I can send it to you but it's how Jesus is living in us and we're his glory if we choose and turn if we don't there you have it but 
after I started really, really, really dialing in on some obedience things to the Lord, the enemy came in. And I was out in Amazon. Nothing to do with them, really. I mean, they were just kind of, I, I get where they're coming from. Probably would have to do the same thing, but copyright laws. They sent me an email and said that my book had got pulled and I had to get a hold of the author and get permission. And it, it, it was pretty ambiguous. And this was like, and I was mad at first. And I took a couple of days and prayed about it. And the Lord said, press the issue. So I did. And finally they told me. Then when I pressed the issue, because I, it was probably somebody on their staff, it, it was almost, you know, like I said, it was demonic. They may not have realized it, but it was like an attack. What happened was some company copyrighted the Bible. Imagine that. Part of the idol worship of money. Sell, uh, try to make money off of stuff that's not yours. The Bible's free, guys. His word's free. His salvation is free. You just have to choose it. So what happened was I had used a, um, a tool, Bible tool, search tool, and out of convenience, because there was a lot of scriptures, and it was very time consuming, and I'm just horrible at all this computer stuff. So I just copied and pasted a lot of the scriptures. Well, I used the New King James Version, so maybe that's part of the problem too. But now I'm going back to the King James Version. But it wasn't public domain. It was a copyrighted, at least on this website. So I had to pull it. I think it's still available on Kindle, but I'm going to redo it this next couple weeks. But I had been doing something else that the Lord had me doing out of obedience too, and I'll, I'll share that with you later. It that it was very, it was very labor intensive and time consuming. And I was like, man, God, I want to get this book refinished. So I, I, you know, I could use some help. I got some ways to do it right now that I think are going to transpire, but I got a May 1st deadline to get it done. So if you're a computer whiz, you know, and you're in Dallas, I want to come to Dallas from wherever. Come down and help me. Um, like I said, I've got that. I can send you a copy of it because I've still got it on my computer. I just have to redo the whole thing now. Cover and everything. <clears throat> so, anyhow. Um, that's it, guys. But get this book. Help me get the second one out, or in a couple weeks, just I'll have it out. Wish I had it out now, but I don't. Um, there's a bunch more coming though, but it has nothing to do with that. It's just I'll watch mine. I'm just being directional, and I'm telling you, it's time to turn your life over to Jesus. Really turn, not a bunch of lip service and hoodwinking God. <clears throat> Because that's kind of what this country has done. Man, six months ago, or all, you know, for a long time, everybody's like, we're such a godly country. We're such a godly country. We're such a godly country. Because we stuck in God we trust on our dollar bill. I mean, look at the dollar bill, guys. The weirdness of all of it. And the pyramid with the eye. And the... Who are we? Who are we? Who are we kidding? Hoodwinking God and kind of using his name in vain, almost honestly. There's a lot to it, guys. There's a lot of depth to that. Where's the where's all these supposed churches today? Why can't you go to them? Why can't you connect with these people? I didn't do it. 
nothing to do with my messages because it's my messages have nothing to do with nothing other than the direction from God. I've got to do the same as you. I've got to stand before him one day and give an account for every word that I'm saying. I don't take it lightly. Read Matthew 22 as not a fun and games. Maybe even that warm, fuzzy feeling message. I get it. Yet it is. Because his grace and mercy endures forever and sufficient. Read Psalms 117. There's so many, so much greatness and goodness, but we have to turn our lives over to him. <clears throat> Been shaking, guys. It's shaking. I get it. But it's for a purpose. So anyhow, we love you guys. Um, I'm going to end with that. I'm going to put out some other ones. <clears throat> Love you guys. Um, you like I said, you can just tune in with us, Instagram, Facebook, um, all at Jesus is Alive in America. You can email me, Jesus is Alive in America at gmail.com. Thanks for watching, tuning in. Uh, share this with others. But let's get our lives right with Him, with God, Jesus, the Holy Ghost, and the Word.